Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, and today we are going to be staying on Kerbin because, well, I want to test out two small crafts that I've been playing around with. Now, these, both of these designs that I want to play with today, eventually my hope is that they'll be useful on other planets uh, but for right now, I just want to test to make sure that they they work. I, I've made their craft files, but I haven't done a single bit of testing yet. So, what we are going to be trying out today, first off, is this buggy. Now, we've made multiple rovers before, but I actually wanted to try making a rover that looked like something more than just a capsule with some wheels stuck on it. So... We've got ourselves a little dune buggy looking thing. <laughs> um, my hope is that perhaps it's more durable and that uh, with one, potentially even two Kerbal seats in here, you know, it could serve as a nice little rover on places like Duna. Uh, well, that's, that's my hope. As you can see inside, we've got the engine in the back, which is some nuclear engines and a battery hidden under there and also another battery back here. Now, these, you know, I'm thinking so that we have plenty of power because we are just going with the little nuclear generators. So, even though they do produce a good deal of power, with four wheels, that power can get drained pretty quick. Plus, I do have scientific instrumentation, as you can see in here, including, I kind of put the uh, thermometer there on sort of a dash. I thought I thought that was amusing. It uh, made me laugh at least, so I like it. <laughs> and of course a couple of antennae on the back so we can keep in constant communication. Now this is of course designed with a seat so that we can pop in a Kerbal, but under all of this crap back here there is also a probe part so that we can drive this thing on its own. And that's what we're going to do today here so that we don't risk the lives of any of our poor, poor Kerbals. Because, well, uh, I don't exactly have the best track record when it comes to rovers. I, I have a tendency to flip them. So, <laughs> let's just launch this thing today. And hopefully it handles quite well. I'm... I'm really thinking of this as like a Duna rover. I think it would be cool to have a couple of little dune buggy looking things on Duna. And wow, this load time is taking quite a while today. Hmm. All right, focus on buggy. There we are. Got a beautiful view of it. Let's uh, open up, or not open, but extend the antennae. There we are. Had it on the action group key for one, so we can, you know, do that. And it is rolling on its own, even though I'm not pushing forward. You gotta love how they do that. One of the things they may want to kind of work on. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. It's not that bad since it's a buggy, but when I've tried to mess around with planes, it has caused issues. Uh, but yeah, let's start driving around with our probe-controlled buggy. All right, now under 10 meters per second, it seems to be controlling quite nicely. Uh, 10 meters per second seems to be the sweet spot for decent control of all the buggies I've built at the very least. Now, I'm sure some of you have probably made buggies that can go faster and control nicely, and actually I should switch to docking controls. Uh, but at, uh, around the 10 meters per second mark seems to be what I can control without flipping. Anything above that, like if we get up even to 12, you can see it start to kind of tip side to side when we try to turn, and I really, really dislike that. They, uh, they've they added a lot of great wheels and things like that to this game, but rovers still control so, so very weird in this game. Uh, because it tries to roll, even when you're on docking controls, it, it just... It wants to flip. The natural state of being for rovers in this game seems to be potential for flipping. So, 
Uh, but yeah, when you're at and around the 10 meters per second mark, it does seem to control quite nicely. I am actually am liking the handling quite well. Let's just head up here. Ooh, okay. And uh, visit the astronaut training center. There we go. Hi, guys. Hello. How are all of you in there? Training going well? Maybe one day you can drive this cool buggy. But not today! Today we go out and uh, explore a little more with this thing. Definitely is doing well. How is it doing on resources? Alright, between the battery and three nuclear uh, reactors on this baby, it's going pretty nicely. <laughs> it's basically sticking at where it should be at about 810 it's not really losing anything which is good I was kind of my hope for this thing and why I put it the whoa okay we're going uh, over 15 meters per second so this thing's getting wonky when trying to turn so little turns little turns little turns <laughs> but, yeah overall I actually do like it it's controlling decently and well about the same, honestly, for most of the rovers that I've built, and by that I mean good at low speeds, not good at anything above small, small speeds. But yeah, it is it is going nicely. I think it would do pretty nicely on Duna, especially because it does have a bit higher of clearance than most of my current rovers. And most of my rovers are kind of flush with the axle, and I'm clipping through the world, lovely. But yeah, most of my rovers are kind of flush with the sort of technical axle pieces here. This has almost twice the clearance, which I'm thinking would be a good thing, considering how many times, both on screen and off screen, I have broken rovers by going over a bump that I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> okay, we're doing the off-road test here across the, uh... Whoa, 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 okay, okay. Kind of wanted to do a wheelie there. All right, all right, we're good. We're good. We're good. All right, let's let's do that again. What the? Oh, that's all the stuff from the jewel rocket. I'd never cleared off the launch pad from that. Well, that's kind of cool. Let's go visit that. I've never actually paid attention to a launch pad after a launch. Let's uh, go over these for added difficulty. There we are. Very good. That's actually kind of a nice thing to test your rovers on like that, because there's all the grooves and angles. That's, uh, I never thought about that before. Alright, look at that. Cool. Okay, we will just park this baby right in here. And, yeah, the buggy I am happy with. It is a nice little design. And with a Kerbal inside, it'll be quite good for, you know, all sorts of little missions. And considering the size of this thing, I could probably put a couple of seats in there so that we could take a couple of Kerbals out on the town, on, you know, Duna, to uh, take samples. Because that's a, that's a kick in time right there. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm definitely enjoying this. It does, like I said, once you get above the 10 meters per second mark, it gets very wonky with the turning. I mean, look at that, you turn too much and this baby's gonna flip. Uh, at 15 especially, oh god, and oh, oh, what have I done? What have I done? Okay, well, <laughs> yes, turning at 15 meters per second, not a good thing. This, uh, this is now stuck forever here. It doesn't seem to want to uh, do anything. Oh, so that's where the probe is. It's, why is it on the bottom? I could have sworn I put it on the inside. Eh, oh well. Okay, so yeah, this uh, this thing's stuck now, and it will never move from this spot, except for, you know, reverting the flight. So, <laughs> let's, let's go back to the space hangar, and we'll take a look at the other small vehicle I wanted to test today. So the buggy, the buggy I was happy with. I, I do think it may need a one or two little tweaks to the design, especially the potential of more seats. Like maybe move the driver's seat up a bit and have like two passenger seats in the back. That might be cool looking perhaps and make it more useful. But yeah, so I am I am pleased with that and it looks much well, I wouldn't say nicer. It it looks more unique than my other rovers that I've designed in the past. But that's enough of that. Let's try the jetpack. Oh god. I'm going to lose a Kerbal to this one. <laughs> uh, on that note, let's... Oh, yeah, it's Bill. I figured it would be. Let's go with... 
Hmm. Gusman should be interesting. <laughs> he's not brave at all, but he's he's kind of stupid, so perhaps he would make a good test subject. But yeah, the jetpack is just a two of these. Uh, what are they called? There we go. The Oscar B fuel tanks. With two of the Rocco Max 2477 engines. Now, I was tempted to try these ones here, the LV 1Rs, but I, I don't. I don't know how well it would do compared to these. I mean, I. I, I just don't know, honestly. Uh, they would be a little bit better, I think, but. Oh, but they don't, have, they don't have any control. These do have vectoring. Though, I don't know how much that's going to matter. And we, of course, have the seat here for the Kerbal to control with. And a battery on the back, because I'm thinking if the Kerbal is sitting here, that might weigh the thing forward. And this, I'm hoping, will counteract that and weigh it backwards. Hopefully. And for safety's sake, I put a parachute on here, because I really don't like the the thought of losing a Kerbal. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now, my thinking for this jetpack is again for interplanetary missions. Now, I know, I know, our Kerbonauts do actually have uh, their own jetpacks, if we bring Gosman out here. Uh, they, we, we do got these little nice little jetpacks here, but the problem is, let's actually let go and turn on the jetpack they don't they don't really work on any planets with any gravity I mean look at this we're, we're going full throttle and nothing nothing at all so what if you are on a planet with gravity and you want to fly around a bit that's my thinking for this you know maybe on a base have a couple of these hooked to it somewhere and we could uh, let the Kerbals fly around Maybe, <laughs> if it works, and doesn't kill them in the process. It's probably going to kill this guy in the process. Oh, who was he again? Gusman. Gusman Kerman. It's... he's... he's probably gonna die. <laughs> let's... let's give it a go, though. Let's, uh, uh, throttle up. I don't think we want too much throttle, because these engines are kind of powerful. Maybe we'll put it at the one-third mark. Maybe. And start the engines. Release. Oh, oh God. Okay, okay, okay. We are, we are flying. Oh God, we need a throttle to control this a bit more. And yes, perhaps we should look into those other engines because this is already almost out of fuel. And there we go, out of fuel. So, huh, that was a short-lived flight. Gusman, my friend been nice knowing you. you yeah, he's kind of having some fun though look at him he's he's all happy don't worry you will survive because we do have the parachute here today but let's let's let this thing fall for a bit so yeah maybe these engines weren't the best idea considering fuel consumption so let's pop the chute oh oh god oh god he fell out of the seat oh I did not think that this would happen oh no oh oh that that was awful I Oh god, I didn't think that that could happen. Well, the jetpack survived. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was horrific. Don't they have seat belts on this thing? I mean, <laughs> what the heck? Oh, that's We can revert the flight. <laughs> Back to the space plane hangar. <laughs> oh god. I never thought about that. I've never had a Kerbo not get launched out of his seat before. That was kind of scary. Okay, let's let's try the other engines, the smaller ones. I don't know if these will make any difference or if they'll even work. I don't I don't I've never actually used these engines, so I don't really know what their thrust is. So perhaps there maybe uh, again, I'm kind of putting them forward a bit because, once again, I think the Kerbal will weigh down the front a bit. And you kind of saw it on that last flight. We, I was pulling all the way back, uh, trying to face the 
jetpack upwards, but it was still tilting forward as we were lifting off. So that's why I kind of put them forward a bit. But let's give this one a go. And you see if these engines make a difference. I don't. I honestly don't know if they do. Like I said, I've, I've never actually used them before. Oh God, we have Bill. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, Bill. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Okay. Well, EVA. To the seat with you, Bill. Ah, oh, why did it change the person? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to need full throttle for these engines, because I know that they're supposed to be weaker. But I, I don't know how much weaker. But let's uh, let's give this a go. And launch off. And whoa, okay. That wasn't enough throttle to even get us in the air. That was just up and then back down. Thankfully, I did have the parachute, though, for us to uh, safely land. So, okay, let's go back to the space plane hangar and try adding, like, maybe two more of those engines. I don't know. I <laughs> I've got I've got no clue on this one. I, I, I really don't. I've... Um, okay, let's... Oh, it just did a single one, didn't it? There we are. Okay, save that and let's... Let's change our guy again. Back to Gusman, poor guy. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna have to live through this again. But yeah, let's let's give this a go. Wondering how well this is going to work. But now that I think about it, I don't think this is gonna be useful at all because these these engines don't gimbal, do they? Let's get him on board. And throttle those up. Yeah, it, it doesn't have any gimbling. So even if we do launch this up, it's not going to have any control in atmosphere. In space, sure, you could probably torque it a bit, but... Oh, I just released the parachute. That's not good. I did not mean to do that. Uh, let's abort. Let's abort and leave the seat. Oh, why isn't the parachute repacking? Huh. Interesting. Well, it is gonna release though once we actually take off. Oh well, let's let's give it a go. Oh yeah, that's that's not working. Okay. Oh, it's still going. I thought I had enough time to hit X. Oh, we have a runaway jetpack. <laughs> Run, Gusman! Run! Oh! Oh, it's in the air. It's or no, it's just a part of it is in the air. It's, uh... Yeah, not working. I may have to rethink the whole jetpack idea. <laughs> I was thinking it might be interesting, like I said, for planets where our Kerbals can't use their own jetpacks, but, uh... So far, these are not really living up to what I was hoping. <laughs> oh, there it goes. It's out of fuel. Um, yeah. Well, this one's embedded in the ground now. So <laughs> it was it was a valiant try, a, a valiant effort indeed, for science, of course, as always. But yeah, it's a valiant effort that just did not work at all. So <laughs> if you have uh, successfully made some sort of jetpack or the like, or perhaps if you have a cool idea for another small craft that we could send to bases off-world, I would love to hear it. Or if you've seen any on the forums or on Reddit, I I would be very pleased to see them and give them a try myself. But yes, the buggy was a success. I do like the buggy, but I gotta keep that thing at about 10 meters per second. The jetpack was a failure. A complete and utter failure. <laughs> But hey, I'm not going to give up on it there. I'll try a few more things with it perhaps in the future. But yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you I hope you enjoyed my um, failures. <laughs> and that you come back for the next episode, where hopefully we have more of a successful time. But until then, my friends, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.